Check out this stunning view. I am skiing at Lake Tahoe. However, that is not Lake Tahoe down there. That is Washoe Lake. Reno is straight out there. Carson City, capital of Nevada, out there. So I'm in Nevada now and going to ski over and do this one-handed and show amazing Lake Tahoe here at uh, Diamond Peak. And check it out. Incredible Lake Tahoe. California on the other side. The border of Nevada, California goes right through the middle. The Shiba shirt is back. It's been a while. I got it out of my storage space up in uh, Portland, Oregon. So my last video was in uh, Portland, came down from Alaska, and I then picked up my vehicle over there. I'll start walking in that direction. And so I stopped here because I really wanted to go over to those uh, cabins there. They look really cool, but there are a bunch of no trespassing signs over there. So I decided to uh, obey the signs and just give a taste of this absolute beautiful winter wonderland here in the Sierra Nevada mountains of kind of northern California, central California, near the Nevada border out there. I was just at Lake Tahoe. I spent eight days cross-country skiing and downhill skiing as you saw in those clips there. I picked up my car in uh, Salem where it was parked at my friend Eric's house and that is where my vehicle has been parked for the past eight months as I was traveling around the world and then came back and I'm now on a more local road trip. I am from Northern California, originally raised in Willits in Mendocino County up uh, further north and towards the coast. And I'm now heading over to Yosemite. Yosemite National Park is absolutely one of the most beautiful, spectacular, mind-blowing places in the world. I have never been there in winter. And so decided to uh, make it happen now Tonight I am staying at a hostel, like a rustic kind of a lodge place with private rooms and a hostel. It is another like four hours or so down the road and so I am heading that way and going to go through this amazing uh, mountain scenery, basically all like mountain scenes and small towns and stuff along the way. So mostly when people tend to think of California then they think of Southern California, Venice Beach, Hollywood, the surfer scene, the skate scene, San Diego, etc. And there is a whole different side of California. There are a whole bunch of ski resorts centered around Lake Tahoe. And then just tons of outdoor activities, summer and winter hiking and backpacking, lakes, rivers. So I'm going to hit the road here, keep on driving and show you the other side of California. No trespassing. No trespassing. No trespassing. Looks like they mean it. All right, back in the rig. So I just turned off at uh, this sign for Red Lake. Red Lake Wildlife Area. Never heard of it before. And I don't know what's going to be over this uh, snowy bank here. However, I suspect it might be Red Lake. So let's try to uh, get through the snow. Oh, it's actually not uh, breaking through too much. Get up here, see what the view is like. Well, it is probably a lake. I'm guessing this is Red Lake. Must be fishermen out there. Ice fishermen. How freaking cool. I have better gear, of course, in the uh, car there, but just going with what I got. 
not going to spend too much time out here. Seems very frozen. Man, gorgeous views. There's the road I'm taking out that way. All right, that's it for now. Keep on cruising. I got a ways to go. So I was reluctant to stop because I didn't want to have to pass that truck again. I was stuck behind it for a long time, but uh, there is a store here, Cook Station. I'm looking for a good root beer, a natural root beer. I love the uh, really good ones, but they didn't have any that I was looking for. So uh, just thought I'd show this classic mountain cabin here. Jack and Connie's Cook Station Saloon Dining Store. of the town of Jackson and came across a historical landmark, the Butte Store, constructed by an Italian stonemason in 1857. It served pioneer settlers and miners as a post office and general store, later known as Ginocchio's. This is a classic. Got a few more hours to go. As you can see, down in elevation here, no more snow, in the foothills of the Sierras, heading in the direction of Sonora. And then where I'm staying tonight is near Mariposa. And so I just passed a sign that said Calaveras County. Just entered into Calaveras County. If that sounds familiar, maybe because of the Mark Twain story called The Jumping Frog, of Calaveras County, which I guess was set here. Not sure if he was ever here, but uh, certainly possible. This is California Gold Rush country. The 49ers of San Francisco are named that because of the 1849 California Gold Rush. 
So I'm a huge Mark Twain fan, and I've read lots of his work, but I couldn't actually remember if I'd read that story, The Jumping Frog of Calaveras County. So I was looking at it online, and it is set in Calaveras County in Angel's Camp, a town that uh, I might drive through, I'm not sure. It was published in 1865, and it was Mark Twain's first published work that actually got him attention. And the uh, short version of the uh, story is that this man has a frog that he teaches to jump over the course of a few months. And so it becomes a trained jumping frog. And so he uh, challenges this guy in some like saloon or whatever to a uh, contest to see if his jumping frog can beat the other guy's jumping frog, but the guy doesn't have a jumping frog. And so the character in the story says, well, let's go out and find you a frog. And so the, uh, the guy that he's challenging accepts the challenge. They go out and get a frog. And then for some reason, the character has to go do something. And then they're gonna do the uh, contest. And so while the character is gone, Jim Smiley, I think, is the guy's name, the train the frog. While he's gone, then the other guy that he's challenging puts lead shot into the uh, jumping frog, the trained one. And so when the guy comes back and they have the jumping contest, then the trained jumping frog won't jump at all because its stomach is full of lead shot. And the other guy does jump. And so the guy wins the bet and uh, he pays up the 40 bucks that they bet. And then after the guy leaves, then he realizes that his frog is like really heavy and uh, like it belches out the lead shot. And so he runs after the guy that cheated him and tries to find him, but he can't find him, I guess, and he doesn't get his money back. So that's the story. So this is Coulterville, Coulterville Groceries Ice. And this is a classic, classic Wild West scene here. Reward, Wells Fargo and Company's Express was robbed this morning between Ion Valley and Galt by two men described as follows. One elderly, heavy set, and sandy complexion. The other tall, slim, and dark complexion. $200 each and one fourth of the treasure recovered will be paid for the arrest and conviction of the robbers. Cool. Whistling Billy, the name of this train. This eight ton short wheel base wood burning locomotive built by the HK Porter Company of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania was delivered to the Merced Mining Company of Coulterville in 1897. 
All of Billy's active life was spent hauling gold-bearing quartz ore over the narrow-gauge tracks from the Mary Harrison mine south of town to the Potosi Stamp Mill west of town, a distance of about four miles. Abandoned in 1904, it was resurrected in the mid-1930s and placed here for all to see and enjoy. Whistling Billy. Coulterville. George W. Coulter started a tent store here early in 1850. So remember the gold rush started in 1849. So that's what he was here for, obviously, to supply hundreds of miners working the rich placers of Maxwell, Boneyard, and Black Creeks. The settlement was called Banderita from the flag flying over Coulter's store. Yosemite National Park, that way. The plan is to go there tomorrow, take that bus. We'll see how that works out. And the Jeffrey Hotel, established 1851. I've been all through this area so many times. My Aunt Chris lived in Sonora, which is kind of northeast of here when I was a kid in the 70s and 80s. And so I came out here lots of times to visit her with the family. But I don't recall if I ever stopped in Coulterville. A little action going on there. The Coulter Cafe, general store, saloon, 